Over the years, I've handled virtually all the common mass-produced push speed rifles, and I've worked on thousands of them over the years. In my opinion, the Browning X-Bolt is the best value currently for a push speed rifle on the market. Let's start with the bolt. Now, first of all, this bolt has that awesome M16 style extractor I talked about. And uh, this rifle also has a three lug bolt design that gives it a 60 degree bolt lift that makes cycling and clearing a pretty big scope relatively easy. And let's see if you can see this right here. Look at that clearance. Easily clears this 50 millimeter objective. It has a real easy to use two position tank safety in the back. And when the safety's on, it locks that bolt down so it doesn't accidentally go out of battery. But it also has a bolt release button on the handle right there. So while this rifle's on safe, you could just press this button in, lift the bolt, load and unload the rifle, do chamber checks. Makes it real safe. You know, this is an ingenious idea that gives you the speed and ease of use of a really nice two position tang safety, but the versatility of a three position safety. So in my opinion, the X-Bolt really hit a home run with this safety design. The magazine on the X-Bolt is a step above other detachable magazines on most hunting rifles in my opinion. It's completely flush mounted, you know, so you can uh, carry the rifle right there, and it really doesn't impede your grip at all. You know, it's really out of the way. It's also got a uh, rotary magazine. You know, so you don't have any of the feeding issues you get a lot of the time with uh, staggered magazines. And, uh, you know, you don't have to rock this magazine around or tilt it to get it to seat just right. Basically, you just... Uh, slap it in and rock out. There's no trickery to it like putting in an AK-47 magazine or even some of the detachable magazines on hunting rifles. You literally just slide it in there and it locks right in, which is pretty good. You know, also to get the magazine out, you just pull this lever down and pull the magazine out. You know, you don't have to do any of that weird push-pull jujitsu to get the magazine out like you do with some of the Sako magazines. And, uh, you know, even though it's a polymer magazine, look how thick this bad boy is. You know, I honestly don't think these magazines are really going to have any durability issues. And let's move on to what makes the X-Bolt famous. The fact that your optics mounts are held on by eight screws instead of the usual four screws like most rifles. You know, as a former gun repair shop employee, I can attest to the fact that 99% of the guys that came to us with that roaming point of impact issue had mounts that worked their way loose from the receiver and uh, threw their point of aim, point of impact off, you know, roamed all over the place. You know, hell, I've even hap you know, had that happen to me before, and I use blue Loctite liberally on all my screws. So by doubling the number of screws, the X-Bolt really addresses this issue well. This plain Jane X-Bolt Hunter came with a four and a half pound trigger, you know, which I find perfectly acceptable for a hard use hunting rifle. It's also a very crisp trigger too. You know, it actually feels better than the trigger on my Sako 85. Nope. Uh, Browning claims that this trigger is adjustable too, so if you think it's too light or too heavy, you could fix that yourself. The stock is a pretty damn good quality walnut with a good grain on it. It's also got deep checkering and a really comfortable skinny wrist on it. It's also factory bedded, and I'll admit it, I think the factory bedding on these X-Bolts are better than what FN puts on the Winchester Model 70s. As a matter of fact, I think it's way better. 
You know what? The recoil pad on these is way above average in my opinion. Honestly, these recoil pads are better than the limb savers I usually use on my rifles. You know, but it's not like it's needed for a .25-06 anyway. I'd say the stock in total is a step above other wood stocks that you're going to get in this price range. And as you can see, they did a good job free-floating this barrel. These X-bolts are made in Japan by Moroku. In my opinion, Moroku is the best Japanese firearm manufacturer. Yeah, I even believe they're better than Hawa. I've owned a couple of Moroku shotguns in the past, which are better than most Italian shotguns in my opinion. So even though you aren't getting an American-made gun, you are getting a gun made with top-tier quality in one of the world's best manufacturing facilities. Accuracy with this gun is exceptional in my opinion. This rifle is a plain Jane bottom tier X-Bolt 100 chambered in 25-06. This is basically the cheapest X-Bolt you can buy. You know, you could get this rifle from about $750 up to $800. Sometimes if you go to like Cabela's or something and they have a rebate, you can get this for $700. You know, this is a completely factory rifle, including the bedding. You know, all I did was add rings, a scope, and loaded up some ammo. I didn't even do ammo development. I just loaded a generic 25-06 round I use as a starter round and shot with that. You know, and it shoots groups like this. That's a five-shot group from 100 yards right there. From a factory rifle. And like I said. I didn't even do load development. I mean. That's just. Pretty good in my opinion right here. You know. And like I said. These are just. Generic rifle loads right here. You know. I, I was shooting 100 grain TTSX. And I just loaded 52 grains of uh, H4350. And jumped them about 75 thousandths to the lands. And uh. You know, shit, look at easy, good, tight, sub-MOA five-shot group right there. Like I said, this is a five-shot group, not a three-shot group. And uh, that's pretty damn good for an off-the-rack gun with, no, you know, with factory bedding and everything. So I'm pretty satisfied with that. Like I said, usually when I shoot the 25-06, um, I find that I always use H4350 for 100 grainers. And I usually find that 53 grains starts to get to that point where you can usually push it a little bit further, but you're nearing max. And, you know, 51 grains is usually a little bit on the slow or low power side. So 52 is always a great place to start. And, uh, you know, this is just a generic load. So I'm sure I can tweak my charge weight a little bit and, uh, you know, probably tweak my... Uh, overall length a little bit and I think I can easily get this down under a half MOA gun I mean easily so you know the proof is in the pudding man it's an accurate gun so I just want to give you an accuracy update here I actually went back to the range about uh, five days after I went and I did I initially shot this rifle and I was able to get some more rounds through it, do kind of a barrel break in, let the barrel settle in. And uh, I actually worked up some charge weights and I went up just over one grain from where I was. And uh, I was able to easily get just under half inch five shot groups. So 
I'm real happy with that. And I didn't even have to play with seating depth. I just left it there with the 75 thousandths jump. My generic seating depth uh, overall length for my 25 aught 6 loads. And uh, I just worked with the powder a little bit. Like I said, I never seen a 25 aught 6 that uh, that uh, didn't like a charge of H4350 with the 100 grainers. And uh, this one proved to be the same. And the fact that I was able to develop a load under a half inch so easy gives real credence to the quality of these Maruku barrels. I mean, seriously, these are good quality barrels. Usually, when a barrel takes that little load development, it's usually indicative of a high quality barrel. So, I'm going to give uh, credit where credit is due. And I think they made a pretty fine rifle with a pretty fine barrel. Also, what helped me out with accuracy, I think, a little bit was I went ahead and I played with this adjustable trigger. I adjusted it pretty much down as far as it'll go, and it measured out to just a hair under three and a half pounds, and I'm super happy with that. I mean, most of my custom hunting rifles, I set with a three and a half pound trigger, so that's perfect. I'm happy with that. Uh, if you want to go a little bit lower, you know, you might have to get a, one of those custom springs or something for your trigger because I don't think you can really get too much under three and a half pounds out of it. But for a, a hard use hunting rifle, I'm perfectly happy with three and a three and a half pounds. I'm even happy with four pounds. So I got this rifle shooting under half MOA. So just thought I'd give you a little update on it. Although the x -Bolt isn't as refined as a Sako 85 or a Weatherby Mark V. It blows other push feed rifles in its price range away, in my opinion. You know, sure, the Tika and Hawa are awesome rifles for the price, but they lack the features and the quality of the X Bolt, in my opinion. I really don't think you're going to do better than the X Bolt in the $800 price range. You know, and I'll be honest here, I was not a fan of the A-Bolt, really didn't like the A-Bolt, but Browning Engineers came forward and made something that really was a giant improvement over that old design when they made the X-Bolt. Although controlled round feed rifles like the Model 70 are what I truly like, I wouldn't hesitate to take an X-Bolt anywhere around the world and hunt with it. Well, I hope you enjoyed my video about my favorite push feed hunting rifle design. You know, you could contact me with any questions or comments at Desert Dog Outdoors at gmail.com. That's Desert Dog Outdoors at gmail.com. As always, thanks for watching and good hunting.